Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Zach Pascarello. I am a certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor. I own Harrisburg Bookkeeping, my bookkeeping business, and I also own a box truck company, Route 20 Trucking Company. I want to talk about today how to pay your dispatcher and your drivers. So this is a QuickBooks tutorial, probably going to be a relatively short video. Every single week I talk about my profit and loss, specifically for my box truck company. I have one box truck right now, 18 foot, and I don't drive it. I own the truck, I own the company. I have a dispatcher and a driver who, who run the show for me. <clears throat> so very important that you have a reliable driver, a, an experienced dispatcher, someone who knows what he or she is doing, and you as the business owner. You know, if you're driving, if you're dispatching, good for you. You're probably really stressed out, but you're probably making a lot of money, so good for you. But if you outsource either your dispatching and or your driving, this is how I this is how I pay my drivers. So I'm going to show you guys first first hand look um, at my QuickBooks and my company, and I'll show you how I do it. So with this video, I'm not going to show you how to calculate how much to pay your driver. Maybe I could talk about that in a different video. I'm going to show you how to account for it, how to do the back end admin, how to do the bookkeeping, and how to put it into your QuickBooks. So it's really only a couple steps. It's not terribly complicated, um, but there's a couple different ways you can do it. So I'll show you both ways. So let me move my face out of the way here my handy dandy little cover cover photo here okay check out my uh, my website harrisburgbookkeeping.com if you want to contact me check out my youtube channel check out my facebook page harrisburg bookkeeping i'm always posting bookkeeping tips and tricks okay so let's jump right into it so this is my actual quickbooks account Route 20 Trucking Company. Okay, so two things here. Um, I pay my driver and my dispatcher every single Friday. And my dispatcher gives me an invoice or a bill. So, you know, rely on your dispatcher. Hopefully, your dispatcher has some type of accounting set up. He or she should be giving you an invoice, basically. Like, hey, you know, you owe me this much money. And typically, you know, they, they run you a whole week and then they give you an invoice and then, you know, at the end of the week, it's due. So my dispatcher gives me an invoice every Friday and then it's due in seven days the following Friday. So I pay my dispatcher every Friday and I pay my driver the same way. So my driver's paycheck will be coming um, in two days on Friday. Today's Wednesday. It'll be coming in on Friday for work completed last week. So that's, that's kind of how I do it. I mean, you, you know, if you're a W2 employee at Amazon or Walmart, chances are you're getting paid every two weeks, maybe every week or probably every two weeks or twice a month. So this is actually a better setup than what most W2 employees have. You usually need to wait. You usually work for two weeks and you get paid at the end of those two weeks for work completed. But I pay my drivers, my dispatcher every single week for work completed the week before. So there's two different ways you can do it. You can create a bill in your QuickBooks, which is kind of a two-step process. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's technically the correct way to do it. Or so you would be creating an accounts payable. So accounts payable means that you owe money to someone. You need to pay them in the future. So you're creating a bill, um, just like any, just like your credit card bill. You know, you get your credit card bill in the month on maybe the 15th and they tell you, hey, you know, it's due in 10 days or whatever. So that's a bill that you have. That's an accounts payable that you have that you need to pay in the future. It's a bill. Or you can treat paying your 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 contractors, your drivers, your dispatchers as an expense in real time. So like if you go to Walmart and you check out the cash register, you're buying your bread and milk that day. So you pay for it right away. So there's two different ways you can account for this. The accounts payable, creating the bill is technically the correct way to do it. I'll show you kind of the quick and easy way to do it. 
Um, so if you're just paying, you know, if you just want to wait until Friday and just record it in your QuickBooks, then you'll just go to this new button up here and you can just hit expense for your vendor. And then you can fill it out this way. So payee, um, here's my dispatcher. And let's see, choose the, the checking account that it came out of. Um, and then the date, you know, on whatever date. So for my example, I'm going to be paying my dispatcher on Friday. So I can make this expense here, August 27th. And then I have it as my category cost of goods sold. And I have it cost of labor dispatcher fee. So I have it broken down. Not only is it under cost of labor, but then I also have dispatching fees. I also have driving and I have hotel. Those are my three types of cost of labor that I have. So dispatching fees is just another chart of account. And then for the description, you know, you can you can be as detailed or as not detailed as you want. So I'll just say August 16th through August 20th. August 16th through August 20th. That, that's all I'm really going to say. And then he only got me one load because last week was kind of a unique week. So it was only $55. So this is, you can create an expense this way. And then it's done. You, you create it once, it's done. And this will be, you know, how you pay your your dispatcher without creating an accounts payable. But that's not the technically the correct way to do it. So I'm not gonna do that. I wouldn't I mean, you know, if you have a small operation and you just kinda wanna cut some corners and just get it done with and you don't really want to deal with any headache of potentially making mistakes, this might not be a bad option. But here's how I would do it. Here's how I'm going to do it. You want to create a bill. So as soon as you get that invoice um, from your dispatcher, or as soon as your driver's done driving for the week, go ahead and create a bill in your QuickBooks. So this is this is like actually what I'm doing right now for my dispatcher and my driver. So I'm going to create a bill, and this means that I owe this person money, or this this vendor money. So I'll start with my dispatcher. And the terms, typically, you know, due on receipt, net 15, net 30, that just means that net 30 means it's due in 30 days from the time that you create the bill. So I'll just make it net 15, and my dispatcher gave me the bill on August 21st, so I'm a little bit late, but, you know, it's not a big deal, it happens all the time. August 21st, and then the due date here, it's actually not net 15, I'm actually net 7 with with these guys so I will just go ahead and make this due date August 27th and then the bill number what I often do here for the bill number is I will whatever invoice number I get from my vendors I'll just go ahead and throw that in there on the bill number so if I get you know any number any any combination of letters and numbers from your vendor throw that in there on the bill number category I already talked about this, this is dispatch fees if you want to create this cost of goods, cost of labor, dispatch fee, in the category, just hit Add New. And then this little box should pop up here, Account Type. It's definitely cost of goods sold. I would not, this would not be an expense. This is, this is definitely cost of goods sold. And then cost of labor here. And then you can name it whatever you want. I would make it a sub count of your cost of goods sold, make it a sub count of your cost of labor and then name it, you know, just like I did, name it dispatch fees. That's, that's what I did. That's what I would do. That's what I would recommend any owner operator do. That's how you create that chart of account. All right. Cogs, cost of labor here, dispatch fees. And like I said, August 16th through August 21st, I think was last week. August 20th was last week and the amount $55 so I owe my dispatcher $55 on August 27th and I know that because he gave me an invoice so that's all you need if you want you can attach the invoice right here to the to your QuickBooks account 
Uh, but that's all you need to do. Just save and close. So now you have a bill that needs to be paid. And this is just virtually speaking in your QuickBooks. So that this, so you still need to you know write a check or do an ACH direct deposit with your checking account. So just very important to remember that your QuickBooks account, your checking account, two completely separate things. Unless you use QuickBooks as your payment processor, in which case there's some overlap, but I would not recommend do that. Keep things separate. Use your QuickBooks. Use your checking account. Um, use other payment processors like Stripe or Square. Don't use QuickBooks payment processor. Okay, so that's the bill for my dispatcher. Now, secondly, I got to pay my driver. So same same concept. Vendor, who's your who's your driver? We have our driver right there terms you know however you pay your drivers I would pay your driver every week maybe maybe not maybe every two weeks August 21st but it's due we'll make the due date there August 27th okay now same concept here for the category we will do cogs cost of labor driving so description here 816 through 821 these are just the the days that he drove let me pull my pdf here um, 2035 so i'm paying my driver two thousand dollars and 35 cents and then my driver goes over the road so i also pay him for a hotel i pay him 75 bucks every day but i already paid him 300 dollars last week in advance so I actually only owe him $75 for the hotel. So all in all, I will be having $2,110 transferring from my checking account to my driver's checking account on Friday. That is how much money I'm paying him for the work that was completed last week. And I'm paying my dispatcher $55. But like I said, this is not actually moving the money. This is just creating a bill. So now I would recommend using like Excel or some other online software. You can use QuickBooks. I wouldn't do that. I would, I would use Excel to track your, your timesheets, basically. That's kind of what it is. It's a timesheet for your driver. So keep detailed records every single week. Make sure you go over it with your driver. Full transparency, no surprises. Make sure your driver knows exactly how much he's going to be getting paid, how much you plan on paying him, you know, maybe even have some sort of formal written contract before he starts driving for you. That way there's no confusion and um, there's no drama when it comes time to paying your driver. So created those two bills. I, I want to touch on two things real quick. Make sure you guys are getting a 1099 from everybody you pay. You owe anybody a 1099 if you pay them more than $600 during the year. So you guys are probably giving W-9s to all of your dispatchers and all of your brokers. Same concept. Get a W-9 from your dispatcher, from your drivers, from anybody who's working for you, your bookkeeper, anybody who you're paying, you need to get a W-9 from them. That way you can give them a 1099 at the end of the year. So very important. And if you're running on payroll, that's completely different. You don't need to give them a 1099 if you have your drivers set up on payroll. You're going to end up paying like 7% of their taxes for them. So that's kind of the downside of, of having W-2 employees. There's a lot of legal and IRS issues that go into whether or not someone's a contractor or a W-2 employee. I'm not going to get into any of that. If you do have questions about that, definitely contact your attorney. Maybe your CPA, probably an attorney when it comes to stuff like that. Okay, last thing I want to show you is the reports. So if you want to know who you owe money to, you can go to your reports and you can run your accounts payable report. So here I can see all my outstanding bills. I can see here that I owe two people, the two bills that I just created. So this is obviously pretty simple right now, but as your business grows and gets more complex, maybe you have multiple dispatchers, multiple drivers, you're gonna have a lot more bills to keep track of. 
So you can run your accounts payable report and you can see who all you owe money to. And then if you guys are lucky on Friday, I'll show you how I match my bank transactions to these bills and mark them as paid. So stay tuned for the ever exciting QuickBooks tutorials and I will keep you all posted. And if you want, to, want me to make any other videos on QuickBooks and trucking and managing your accounting and bookkeeping, um, comment on my Facebook videos, my YouTube channel, send me an email, give me a call, reach out any way you can. I'm happy to help and I hope these videos are helpful.